Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how easy it is to build admin dashboards using the Flask admin extension. So here I have a dashboard that I built. It's very simple. Here on the home page, it has admin dashboard. So I added this admin dashboard, but the navigation bar up here comes from the extension. So here I have two links other than home. I have user and clicking on it, I have a list of users in my database. So this is directly from my database. If I hit create here, and create a new user, let's say new user, I can hit save and the user gets saved into my database. I have posts and I have a couple posts in the database. I can create a new post, new posts. This is a new post here. And I can select the user that this post belongs to, new user, hit save, and then a new post is created. And if I go over to my database and select star from posts, I see the posts are in there and select star from user. I see the users are in there. So everything I do on the admin dashboard is reflected in my database, right? So this is a good tool to use if you want a way for your users to manipulate data in the database without giving them direct access to the database. And before I get started on this admin example, I just want to say I do have something called a coaching program where I help people one on one. So if you're interested in getting help from me one on one with your Flask app, with Flask admin, with anything, then you can go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching. Um, you can uh, fill out the form, get in contact with me, and I can help you with your app in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So if you're interested in something like that, uh, feel free to fill out the form. Go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching or the link in the description below. So now let's get into the example. Okay, so to start, this is what I have to begin with. I have a very simple Flask app here. It doesn't do anything. It just sets up Flask. It initializes Flask SQL Alchemy, and then that's it. So it doesn't do anything yet, but the point is, this is my starting point. So what I want to do first is I want to bring in Flask Admin. So to do that, I am going to stop my server and install Flask Admin. So pip install Flask-admin, just like that, and it will install for me, and then I'll start my app again. And then what I'll do, is at the top in the imports, I will say from Flask admin, import admin. So this follows the same pattern as all the other Flask extensions. So I'm going to instantiate the admin object and I'm putting this outside of create app. So if I wanted to move this to its own file later, I could, but just to keep this video simple, I'm putting them here outside of the create app. And then inside of create app, I will call admin init app using the app object and that's it. So I have Flask admin and I just set it up. And by just doing those three things, so these three lines of code, the import, the instantiation, and then the init here, I have an admin dashboard. So let me go to my app, nothing on the home page because I don't have a route defined. But if I go to slash admin, I have an admin dashboard. As you can see, there's nothing here other than a link to home, which is just the admin dashboard itself. And we see the main page is blank and there are no links here. So that's what we're going to fill in. So before we get to the model part where we can actually like add stuff into the database, depending on what models we have defined with Flask admin, let's just add something to this page here. So let me go back to the code and to modify that main page, what you want to do is you want to create a directory called templates and then inside of templates, create an admin directory and then inside of admin, create a file called index.html. And you're going to use the Jinja extends. So I'm going to extend some base template. And the name of this base template is admin slash master. So it's in the admin folder and it's master.html. And then that completes the extends. And then I want to make all of my changes in a block called body. So block body here. And then I'll put the uh, in block here. And then in between this, I can put whatever I want. So I'm just going to put like a header tag here saying admin dashboard. But of course you can put whatever you want here. The idea here is you have access to the HTML so you can put whatever you want. So now let me restart my server, make sure those changes are picked up and I can go over and refresh and we see it says admin dashboard. Great, so this is just the beginning of any changes you can make to this part of the dashboard. But this really isn't the interesting part of Flask admin. This is just another page in your app if you treat it that way. But instead we want those links to display the data in the database and allow us to create new things in the database. So what I'll do is first I'll create a model. So I'll go to app.py and I will create a user model since that is so common. So I'll create a class called user. It inherits from db.model. 
It's going to have an ID field on it, of course, and this will be an integer, and I'll set the primary key to true. And then let's just have like a name for the user. We don't have to add like all the other stuff. Uh, for this purpose, name should be okay. So I have this user model and I want to work with this user model in Flask admin, the admin dashboard that I have. So what I can do is I can import uh, from Flask admin, I want to import something called model view. And it's actually not just from Flask admin, it's from flaskadmin.contrib.sqla. This SQL A is short for SQL Alchemy. So I want to import model view here. And then all I need to do is somewhere after I define the user class, I want to take the admin object that I have. So the one that I have here, and I want to add a view onto it. So I call add view. And then I take the model view that I have. So I just imported this model view. And for model view, I need to pass two things. I need to pass the model that I want to create a view for, which is user. And then I also need to pass the DB object. So db.session. So once again, these are defined up here. This can all be in a separate file. I'm just putting it here for convenience purposes, like I said. Um, but if you wanted to put this stuff in its own file, you could. So I just added that view. I saved my app, it restarted. So now let's refresh. And now I see this link for user here. So if I click on this link, I get this error, no such table user. And it should be obvious why this is happening. It's because I didn't actually create the database yet. So let me start my shell, Flask shell, and I'll just do DB create all. And that just creates the database for me. So it's in my instance directory. And if I do dot tables here, I see the user table there. So now if I start my app again, I can refresh this page. And now we get this screen here. So the first thing you see is the list of rows in the database basically. So right now I have no data in the database, so I don't see anything. But I also have this tab for create. So let me just hit create there. And what I can do is I can just add a record. So let's put my name, Anthony, and I'll add another. And here we see another error that we have. And this is the second minor thing that we have to add. So we need a secret key. So secret key equals, uh, let's say my secret. And if we go back to the user part, so let me just delete everything. It's actually in there. So the secret key was needed after I added to the database. So we see I have a user with name Anthony. If I create another user, let's call this user free print it and hit save. Now it takes me back to this main page and we see I have two users, Anthony and pretty print it. So I have an edit button, this pencil here, I can click it and make any edits that I want. And of course, if I had more fields, I can edit those fields, but I just have the name field. Um, I'll hit cancel and I can also delete. So if I wanted to delete pretty print it, for example, I can click on the delete button. It asks me, am I sure I'm not going to delete it? but I can do that, right? So that's the most straightforward way of using Flask Admin. Right away, you get this screen where you can look at the data in the database and edit it or even delete it if you wanted to. So this is already like a huge thing if you're going to be editing data in a simple way. Um, but of course, there's more that you can do. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use this with another model as well. And we'll make very slight changes to how it works by default so you can see some of the things that you can do with Flask Admin. So I'll go back to my code and I want to create a new model called posts. So imagine this is some kind of blog app. I can do posts like this, and then it's gonna have an integer column for the primary key like always. And then in addition to that, I'll have a title for the blog posts. So DB column string, let's say up to 100 characters for the title. It's gonna have a body. So this one will be DB text since it can be any length. And then it's going to have a foreign key to the user model. So user ID equals DB column, uh, DB foreign, uh, foreign key. And then in here, I'm going to point to the user table and the ID column. And I just wanna say that this is nullable equals false. So that means we have to have a value here. We can't put nothing for the user ID. So let me go ahead and save that. And then I can add another view. So admin, add view, model view. And this one will take posts. And then once again, it takes the database session. So the app reloads, I can refresh. And I see posts here at the top. If I click post, once again, we get this error, no such table posts. And that's because the table isn't in the database yet. So if I go to the shell, do db create all, 
and then start the app again. Now I should be able to see this page and I don't see any data, but I do see title and body. So those are the fields that I would wanna see. But note that I don't see anything for user. And the reason why this happens is because we need a relationship field and we need to tell Flask admin to actually display that on our form and on our list. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way that you do that is you take the model view and you extend it. So instead of using model view here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class called post view that inherits from model view and I'm going to extend it. So first, let me just put pass and I'll put it in the view. So now it's using the post view instead of model view, but because I have pass, it's basically the same thing as model view. It just has a different name because I haven't put anything in there yet. So if I refresh this, it's still the same thing. So now let me make some modifications. Uh, the first modification I'll make is uh, can delete equals false. So as you can probably guess, this means that I will no longer be able to delete things on the post. And here uh, we see that the list changes a little bit because there's normally space left over for the delete button, but I removed it. So if I put it back to true, we see like the checkbox. So the checkbox would allow me to like select a bunch of posts at the same time and delete them. But because I'm putting can delete to false, I can no longer do that, right? And you'll see this happen once I add some data. But the thing I want to do is I want to be able to add like a user when I create a post. So to do that, I need to create relationship fields. So on the user, I'll create one called posts. So db.relationship. And then this will point to the post table and it's going to back populate a field on the post called user. And then I'll just create the pair relationship here. So this one has something called user, db relationship, and then user, and this back populates the posts. So posts here, plural, this should be back populates with an S. So let me just save that so my app doesn't crash. Now, when we go here, we see the same thing, right? I go to create, I still don't see the user. And the reason why this is happening is because there were some changes in the most recent version of Flask SQL Alchemy and the regular SQL Alchemy library that broke the default way of this working in Flask admin. So I'm sure they're gonna fix it eventually, but it's not a problem because we can make it work anyway. And what I want to do is I wanna be able to select a user when I create a post. So here I need to specify something called form columns and I can pass a list of things. So right now I have the title, the body, and I also wanna have the user because I just created the user model. So let me save that. And then I'll go here, refresh, go to create, and I don't see anything. And it's because I have an S on form columns. So it should be form columns. Now, when I refresh, I see it. We see this little red asterisk, meaning that this field is required. And let me go back to my user model and let me just define the dunderstir method. So dunderstir self, and I want to return a self.name. So now when I refresh, I see Anthony and pretty printed here because it's using the dunderstir to display this. So now that I find dunderstir, I can see Anthony and pretty printed. So I'll call this my first post and the body will be uh, my first post again. Anthony will be the user. I'll hit save. And now we see here my first post and my first post. I can edit it, but I can't delete it because remember, I put this to false. If I put it to true, and refresh this, now the trash can comes back and I'd be able to delete it, but I'm going to put that back to false. And then finally, if I want to see the user on that list page, then I can specify the column list. So it works the same way as form columns. So let me just copy that and paste it there and then refresh. And now we see title, body and user here, Anthony. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to get started with Flask Admin. Uh, basically, all the modifications that you would make to your particular admin dashboard will be through these uh, custom views that you create. So you just inherit the model view and then you make whatever changes you want to make here. And if you look at the documentation, there are a bunch of different things that you can do so you can modify your admin dashboard in the way that you want. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions about anything I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.